Hey guys, Chris Clothier here with the Grind Podcast coming to you with another episode today and I think it's super timely. This episode is all about what the heck is going on out there, how do I stay focused and how do I maximize this opportunity that's in front of us and I'm not talking about maximize like how do I build my portfolio or how do I, you know, go out there and buy more houses or sell more houses or make more money or how do I start it? I don't necessarily mean that. And yet I mean all of that. By maximize, I mean how do I take this opportunity, sit back and reevaluate what I'm doing. Opportunities like this where there's chaos, where there's turmoil, there's fear. These are all um, very, very, very conducive for creativity. This is the time when I know that me personally, even us as a company, we practice what we preach. We exercise this opportunity to say, okay, what are we doing? What are we doing that's good? What are we doing that's bad? What can we improve on? What do we need to do more of? What do we need to do less of? I mean, we really start digging in and asking lots of questions because we firmly believe in this theory, I guess, this operational uh, way that says, how I got here, which I know is really bad English, how I got here is not how I will get there. So I look back at the past and look at the steps we took, look at the anything that we may have done in our business, in our, in our daily lives, in our home lives, anything whatsoever. We just look back and say, everything I was doing got me to this point I'm at right now in this moment of opportunity. And I have the opportunity to evaluate and change and alter and possibly do things differently, big, small, detailed, non it doesn't matter, but just look at everything. I could do things differently now going forward because where I want to go Maybe such a such a mountaintop that I've got to climb that it's just different. It's not going to, I'm not going to be successful if I keep doing what I've been doing. That's what I mean by opportunity. That's why I mean it's it's really really precious for us um, as entrepreneurs, as investors, whatever, as just people in our daily lives. This is, you know, when when you are faced with, and I love the I love the terminology that people try and come up with. When you're faced with the headwinds that we're faced with right now, which is the news cycle is really bad. We know that interest rates are up. We know that food and gas and basics, I mean, they're, they're through the roof. I could not believe last night at the grocery store the cost of some things. And, you know, look, it's, these are times it's just reflective of, hey, there's a lot of turmoil. There's a lot of things happening right now that are forcing us to reevaluate and rethink. Well, the same thing's happening in business. All right, as what's happening in our daily lives. And for us as a company, we've taken this opportunity to say, okay, what are we doing? You know, what do we what do we do each day from uh, our meeting schedules? So if you're, I mean, if you're taking notes here, look, what meetings are you having every day? What are you doing every day for your physical fitness and your physical well being? What about your mental fitness, your mental well being? What about um, your team? Do you have a team? Do you need a team? You know, in the past, have you been able to do everything yourself? But right now, you could be in one of those industries where demand is really starting to rise up. And now you got to think about, hey, I need to add on team members, which is risky in order to meet demand going forward. But this might be the time for me to reevaluate and rethink. Um, there's a lot of there are a lot of entrepreneurs that I sit down, and I talk with, I meet with, you know, some are mentors of mine, some I mentor. And look, it's um all of us are kind of talking the same way right now that that when you have these um disruptions in business and you know, for us in particular it's the housing market. And it's just one little piece of the housing market that's starting to get disrupted right now. So, capital is really really expensive. So the cost of an asset is higher. It costs an investor more to get into an asset. So you've got, you've got one side of the real estate business where it's costing a lot more money to, to borrow 
money from lending institutions to get into real estate. So we have to evaluate. I had a dollar before and it could buy me $3 worth of real estate. But today, that same $3 worth of real estate costs four. So I now I need more of my own money. I need more money to get involved in that. That's a that's a very simplistic way to look at it. Um, and a lot of investors they pull back. They say I'm going to do what I've always been doing, which means now I can't buy. I look at numbers the same way. I invest for the same reason. I've been investing in the same neighborhoods, and because that's the way I know how to invest, I'm not going to make any adjustments. Well, let me tell you where that's that's a in my opinion, a poor strategy, because right now, your dollar as an investor, as we talked about on this podcast already many times before, it's worth less today than it was yesterday. And it's going to be less worth less tomorrow than it is today. Now, that's simplistic view, but we we feel pretty strongly that in the future, you're going to see some fluctuation and possibly money will be a little more expensive. So mortgage borrowing rates will go up. That's a that's a simplistic view, but that's where we believe they're heading. How much? Not 100% sure. Uh, drastic changes? Probably not. We've already been through that. We've been through uh, 200 basis points more expensive today than it was back at the beginning of the year to buy a home. In some cases, it's a little higher. It's almost 300 basis points more expensive. So it's almost doubled the interest rate to borrow money to be able to buy a house. So, you know, we've already we've already kind of baked in the changes as investors. So what do we do next? A lot of investors are saying, well, I'm going to, I'm going to keep running my numbers the exact same way. And if it doesn't pencil out in this particular way, then I'm not going to invest. But let me ask you a question. What if you could instead change your strategy? What if up to this point as an investor, your entire strategy was I want to maximize cash flow. So I may have been buying assets that uh, had a low barrier of entry. Maybe they had deferred maintenance, so I'm banking on not having that maintenance in the future, but it could be there because it's been deferred already. But I've got a lower barrier of entry, which is increasing my monthly cash flow, and it's been good. But if I want to continue to build assets and and take advantage of my dollar because it's going to be less worth less in the future, so i got to get it into an asset. I've got to get my cash into an asset that's going to hold value or be worth more in the future than it is today. See, that's the trick. I've got to get out of cash because it will be worth less. And the stock market is not where I need to go. Not today. It's too, I mean, way too unreliable, unpredictable. Unless I'm all in on crypto, I'm not going there right now because who the heck knows what's going to happen with that. There's a lot of, there's a lot of uh, varying opinion. But there's no varying opinion on real estate. Everyone says the same thing. Everyone knows the same thing, that when you buy a physical asset, the likelihood of that physical asset being worth what you paid or more in the future is high if you've done your homework. So this is where I'm saying change your your approach a little bit. Instead of buying assets that may have deferred maintenance, that may have a low barrier of entry, that may produce a high probability of a really high monthly cash flow, which is good. This might be the time to buy assets that have no deferred maintenance. This might be the time to buy an asset that, that instead of buying two less expensive houses, maybe I'm going to buy the absolute best asset I can, like the one that is going to have the highest level of demand, the one that's going to have the highest probability of going up in value. So today I'm buying an asset that's highly in demand, so it's going to be occupied. Therefore, my note is covered. But I may not make cash flow on it because it's a more expensive property. Maybe it's more expensive, and it should be, because it has no deferred maintenance. More work has been done to it. Perhaps I'm buying an asset now that because it's had more work done, less deferred maintenance, it's a little more expensive in a higher cost area. But there's greater demand from multi-income families, from families that want to stay in a house for a longer period of time. So therefore, I've got a higher probability of low vacancy, low maintenance, and because I'm buying it in today's market with today's dollar that is going to be more expensive in the future, it's got a really good probability of going up in value because of it's in demand. So 
investors who have been buying for cash flow now are transferring over to be buying for appreciation and not the kind of appreciation where you're like, man, this thing's going to go up 20% a year, so I'm going to lose $500 a month on it, but I'm making $1,000 a month in, in uh, you know, appreciation or this market has always appreciated. Every cycle has gone up, like I'm buying in Hawaii or the coast of California. That's highly speculative and you must be able to hold it for years upon years upon years. I'm talking about, again, and this, of course, this is what we know, but Midwest markets. Buying in places where they do not traditionally go skyrocketing up. They follow inflation as far as the increase in the pricing. Memphis has tracked inflation for the past three decades as far as home pricing increases. And only in the past 10 years has it really kind of bumped up ahead of inflation. This year, if it tracks inflation, you talk about turning your money you know, into something even more, you're buying homes in these Midwest markets that traditionally don't have big ups and downs. They just simply nice and easy track along with inflation. They're going up five to 7% a year over the last three to four years. They're expected to go up three to 7% now into the next few, you know, four or five years in advance of us. That's the market that many investors, that's the kind of questions you should be asking yourself. If I've been investing for cash flow, do I invest now for appreciation and build a balanced portfolio? A portfolio that I've got properties that will continue and should continue to provide an income for me. But as, as the economy struggles, as people struggle, there could, these properties, because I'm bottom for cash flow, they could give me issues. Deferred maintenance bills will come up. Vacancies will hit. They're, these are neighborhoods that are not as in demand, but they had a high probability of producing a cash flow for me when they're occupied, as opposed to now buying assets that balance out a portfolio that are bought pre- precisely because they are in areas of markets. They are a particular type of property that should hold or go up in value. I tell investors all the time, my biggest piece of advice, and I'm doubling down on it right now, buy for a return of capital first. This is not the time to speculate. This is not the time to take super high risk investments on lower in demand areas, on more challenged uh, neighborhoods, on more challenged. It's not. There will be people that will win there, but they will have a lot of experience investing there. Generally, they are more, uh, they're closer to their properties, sometimes they're even self managed. But right now, investors should be investing for return of capital first. And once you know that you bought an asset that is highly likely to return your capital, then you're looking at how do I maximize my return on capital? And some of that will be appreciation play. Okay. So that's what I mean by reevaluate. And I, I brought some books out here. I thought this was such a good time to talk about a few of these books that I haven't talked about on the podcast yet because. These are books that steal us and teach us about times like this, like The Power of a Positive Attitude. I read this book back in 1988 by Norman Vincent Peale. The Power of a... The, the, this is not The Power of the Positive Attitude, sorry. This is The Positive Principle Today. Um, loved Norman Vincent Peale. It got me right into my freshman year in high school or in, in college um, and wrote a lot of books about this guy. Very good. Um, newer stuff. Ryan Holiday, The Obstacle is the Way. There's no easy way. There's no easy buttons. You know, like we did this a couple weeks. There's no easy buttons. You got to go through the tough times to understand how to react in tough times. You got to steal yourself and learn and understand that how do I act right now? How do I self-evaluate? How do I take a look at everything I'm doing to make sure that I can be successful, however you define success, as you go forward? The Four Agreements. I love this book. I love it. And it has nothing to do with Tom Brady reading it. The, Tom Brady made this book popular here in the last couple of years for anybody that didn't understand that reference. I read this book long before Tom Brady said it was a good book to read. Um, the Four Agreements. It's all about how we conduct ourselves. And if you understand what the Four Agreements are, then you, then you understand in tough times, this is what we do and how we operate. Zig Ziglar, Embrace the Struggle. Love Zig Ziglar. Another Norman Vincent Peale. Why some positive thinkers get powerful results. There's a lot of negative news going on right now. 
And positive people understand how to take that negative environment and kind of shove it out to the side and use it as fuel. Use it as, this is when I question myself. This is when I question my team. This is when I make adjustments. This is when I say that what got me here isn't going to get me there. And I need to be really, really, really um, observant of what do I need to do to make progress? What do I need to do to move forward? What do I need to do to grow? Last one is, and I love this book called The Alchemist by uh, Paulo Coelho. So this is a book that kind of reminds us, to me anyway, it reminds us that sometimes the treasure we seek isn't out there somewhere. It's right here, and we just need to ask the right questions and look in the right areas to find it. And by treasure we seek, sometimes I mean like the the very things that are going to push us forward and make us better. Um, I've I, Look, if you haven't already noticed, I'm not particularly bothered or worried about what's going to happen next in the economy. Um, I know that as a company, as an entrepreneur, I plan to thrive and to assist anyone who has worked with our company. I'm talking about from our team to our vendors, to our residents, to our investment clients, the four core groups of people that we serve, all of them are going to do, uh, we're going to do everything we can to make sure all of them are successful and come out of whatever this time period is in a very positive, good way. And there's no other way for me to attack the day. There's just not. Uh, I don't have time to, to think negatively. When stuff comes across, do I, do I have fear? Of course. It's healthy. I need to have fear. I need to be fearful of things that are happening, but not fearful that I freeze up, fearful that I stay alert, that I'm aware and fearful that I'm willing to ask questions. Do I need to keep doing this or do I need to change my tactics? Do I need to keep doing that or do I need to change my approach? And I'm talking everything all the way down to my own budget at home. Like, what am I spending money on here? Do I need to make adjustments here? Not because I'm fearful of I'm not going to have enough money, but no, because these times are a great time to evaluate. So if you're listening, if you're, if you're paying attention here today, understand that um, I'm not telling you that everything's bad and you need to go change everything. No, I'm telling you that, that yeah, there's challenges right now. And, and during challenges are when we need to really rise to the occasion and use it as the opportunity to ask, hey, do I need to adjust anything? Do I need to change anything? Am I fully on top of everything? Am I in front of any issues that may come up? Am I going to be you know, an ass-kicking winner, uh, however I choose to define winning? Or am I going to be you know, wondering what the hell just happened because I didn't ask the right questions at the right times? And for me, I'm always willing to admit that I'm wrong or I'm doing something wrong or I can do something differently if it's going to help me uh, get where I want to go. So I hope that's your strategy too. I hope that you embrace that that type of thinking because we are presented right now with a really, really, really good opportunity. It's a really, really good opportunity to reevaluate, to make some adjustments, and maybe even come out way, way ahead of where we were when we entered this kind of this uncertainty period. Guys, I hope you uh, enjoyed this week's episode of the podcast. Shoot me any questions, like the podcast, share it. Let me know what I can do to assist with you. And until we get a chance to come together again, guys, commit to the grind. We'll see you.